Hey there, thanks for coming to watch the top new features in Tableau 2023.3. I'm Dan Saavedra from MergerData.com, and today I'm going to be going into the top new features for both Tableau Desktop and Tableau Cloud. This release was a little bit lighter than what we usually see from Tableau, but I still think there are some pretty good features that were released that will really help out if you're a developer and if you're an end user just using Tableau to consume dashboards. So let's jump into it. The first new feature that I'm going to highlight is the dynamic axis ranges. And for these features, I'm not going to actually go into Tableau Desktop and Tableau Cloud like I usually do, because I think that the previews and the explanations on the Tableau new features page does a really good job of displaying what you can do with this new feature. Now, I will talk a little bit about what I think are some use cases for this and where you can implement that in, in your dashboards to make a big difference. So the first one is dynamic axis ranges. And this is a really interesting feature. As you can see from the small GIF below, you can basically highlight points in a graph or in a worksheet that you create and update the axis range for other worksheets on the same dashboard. So this is really powerful in terms of the interactivity that you can provide in your dashboards without having to build out really complex drill down functionality. So instead, you'll be able to set dynamic axis ranges for the beginning, for the end of the axis, and then you can set up the parameter actions in order to do that. So an immediate use case that will be relevant for a lot of people is just building out this functionality for any time-based analysis. And so when you have different levels of detail in terms of your dates, you'll be able to allow users to see data a lot better with smaller time frames. So let's say that you have a graph like in the example below where it plots on a daily level and then you have a larger time frame that you want to start with, you'll now be able to easily allow users to drill down into a smaller time frame and really see the day by day changes compared to just a very big squiggly graph. So it makes it a little easier to see trends within those periods. And then you'll also be able to show both a high level performance in terms of like a quarter or a yearly level, but then you'll also allow the user to see on a more daily level what those trends look like when they select certain time periods. So really good new feature from Tableau. I think this is the best one for this release. If you want to see the other ones, obviously stay on and I'll go through them. But if you're just looking for the big hitter, this is the one. It's in Tableau Cloud. It's in Tableau and Desktop as well. So usually I do like top five, but there's only three features in Tableau Desktop and then a lot of overlaps in Tableau Cloud. So we'll just go through each one of these, these here. This one is nice for accessibility. So you can provide additional alt text for your visualizations pretty straightforward. You just type it in, click OK. And then people who use screen reading software will be able to have a more accurate description for the visualizations, which is really useful. Next, we have the accelerators in desktop. And so accelerators were a little bit confusing, in my opinion, when they first came out. Tableau is making it easier for you to go through and access those. And so now, in desktop, the accelerators will be in the start pane, as you can see from the screenshot here. So just an easier way to access accelerators and get started with them. So pretty good new feature for Tableau desktop. And then we'll go to Tableau cloud here. One thing that bothers me about this drop down menu is that they're not in alphabetical order for some reason. And I don't know why. Um, but anyway, I digress. Here we have the Tableau Cloud new features. So obviously we have the dynamic axis ranges that we already talked about. And then we have some other ones that are nice to have, it's not really a huge impact, but there are a couple that I think are a big change. And those big changes are primarily this embedding playground right here, and then the suspend extract refreshes for inactive data sources. So I'll start with this bottom one, because I think this is after dynamic access ranges in terms of importance. For this one, especially if you're using large data sets and you're pulling from the cloud, suspending extract refreshes for inactive data sources are gonna, is gonna help you on your cloud compute costs 
significantly. So this is a big one just because it's an easy win to reduce cloud costs for your business. So we don't want to be wasting money extracting data from our warehouses if users aren't even looking at the dashboard in the first place. And so Tableau is just handling that for you here. Basically, they are allowing you to configure a setting so that the extracts won't occur if people aren't looking at these data sources through dashboards. So a lot of moves lately in updates to save on uh, cloud spend, which is great from Tableau. It really helps out when you're operating at scale and you don't have to have as much maintenance activities around that type of stuff. Next, we have the embedding playground here. And this is another big win as well, just because the future is embedding, in my opinion. People don't want to have to go to separate platforms in order to look at their analytics. And so, especially with larger businesses, you'll, all, you'll often be using multiple tools. And so if you can place dashboards in context, whether that's in a presentation, whether that's in a custom interface where you have three or four tools that you're using for analytics, embedding is going to allow the user to operate much more efficiently and get all of their data and analytics in one spot. And so the embedding playground is great because this is allowing people to, this is allowing developers to create embedded experiences in a much more streamlined way. So you'll have this playground where you can develop and see instant changes to those updates that you make to your code. So Tableau keeps improving the developer experience for embedding and are making this a larger part of their product. And those three things are pretty much, in my opinion, the biggest impact changes in 2023.3. Now there are other changes and those changes are, in my opinion, small in nature, but they can still make a difference. So Tableau Cle keeps integrating their platform further and further with Salesforce. Obviously they were acquired by Salesforce. It was a, it was a strategic move. So it makes sense for them to continue to integrate further. Then we have the Tableau Cloud add-on for Google Workspace. In my opinion, these types of things are pretty inconsequential. I don't know. I just don't see too much value in providing a, a short preview of a link there. Maybe other people will disagree and find that really useful, but I never found any use cases that made a big impact for those types of preview type features. Next, we have this on-demand access here, once again, related to embedded analytics. And basically, if you have on-demand access, this will help you out by allowing you to assert users and permissions at the time of access. So it's a little more streamlined. You'll have a single source of truth for everything around permissions and access. Otherwise, these other things here, you can visit the new features page to look at. You have command cancellation. So you can stop something that's processing. You have table fonts for web authoring, login flow enhancements. So I know if you've been logging into Tableau Cloud at all, sometimes it's not very smooth, especially if you have uh, multiple instances that you're working with, but they're starting to fix that and make it a little more streamlined. We have autosave enhancements, admin insights, a token da tokens data source. That's a pretty confusing <laughs> title. But yeah, take a look at this stuff if, if you wanna see the, the various features that Tableau is releasing. They do have other features that they released for their other products. Uh, Tableau Prep had quite a few. I think this release was a little bit lighter than what we typically see. It seemed like m more baby step type improvements rather than the typical big hitters that we see. But dynamic access ranges, big deal makes developing a lot easier, makes the user experience a lot easier. So hopefully you found this video useful. Hopefully you find some use cases for these new features in Tableau 2023.3. I appreciate you coming by to watch. I'm Dan Saavedra from mergerdata.com. We do analytics for solo marketers. So you're always overwhelmed as a solo marketer with all the responsibilities you have around strategy, around creative, and then on top of that, you're usually 
operating as a pseudo analyst and a pseudo systems admin. So what we do is we're that go-to data team for you so that you can offload the reporting and the analytics to us and still operate day to day with good data to run your campaigns and run your strategy. So check out mergerdata.com. If you're a solo marketer and you're having a tough time just keeping up with all the reporting that's required from you. Once again, I'm Dan Savedra and thanks for watching.